Hello, East Texas, and hello to everyone watching from wherever you're watching from. I'm Pastor Debbie at Winsboro United First Methodist Church, and I'm really glad that you've tuned in today because I was fascinated by an article I read recently about how Oxford Dictionary publishers always choose one word of the year in January. Now, I went back curiously to look at words that Oxford had chosen in past years, and I have to admit, some of those words I hadn't even heard of before. But this year, when I read the fact that Oxford could not pick just one word to describe 2020, oh, I recognized a lot of the words, and I'm sure you will too. Some of the words they chose to represent 2020 were coronavirus, COVID-19, lockdown, shelter in place, social distancing, Black Lives Matter, cancel culture, pandemic, twindemic, defund, anti-masker, mask shamer, essential workers, wokeness, impeachment, remote working, Zoom, staycation, and there were some words that I really had to kind of think about. Those words were blurs day, support bubbles or support pods, hygiene theater, and doom scrolling. How familiar are you with those words? Oxford chooses the word of the year based on monitoring of news content on a daily basis. So by the end of the year, there are over 11 billion words that a lexographer will search and analyze through computer means. And the report this year noted that what was generally unprecedented in 2020 was the hyperspeed at which the English-speaking world amassed a new collective vocabulary relating to the coronavirus and how quickly it became, in many instances, a core part of the language. Now, other dictionaries publish a word of the year also. Merriam-Webster picked pandemic. Cambridge selected quarantine. Collins chose a word in 2020 that became synonymous for quarantine. They chose the word lockdown. I love how an article in the Wired Word unpacked some of these words from a biblical standpoint, and then they looked at how these words not only share a part of our journey through 2020, but for me, they really open up a door for us to see hope and maybe some new words for 2021. And by the way, I'm going to continue this conversation next Monday as well. So come back because there are a lot of words that I won't get to today. Today, I want to talk about two terms on Oxford's list that I wasn't really familiar with. One is hygiene theater. This is defined as cleaning practices which give the illusion of sanitization without really reducing the risk of infection. Now, this term arose from people who questioned the practice of all the hand washing and mask wearing and social distancing that were encouraged to slow the infection. I'm guessing the, this word came from people who likely believe that the virus is a political hoax and who also believed it would probably end after the election. But I think Jesus himself might have used this word had it been such a thing back in first century times, because he would have used it in a different way. You see, the Hebrew people wrote law after law after law of how to be clean and unclean in our spiritual practices. But Jesus described the religious leaders as hypocrites. In Matthew 23, he said, For you are all like whitewashed tombs, which on the outside look beautiful, but inside are full of bones of the dead and all kinds of filth. 
yikes, those are pretty strong words. I think Jesus was probably saying that they were practicing uh, hygiene theater, the religious leaders were. And maybe this message is one that we should look at in a different way today. Maybe instead of criticizing everyone that's trying to do everything they can to keep people safe with what they know at the time might work to protect people from the virus, maybe what we should be doing is looking at our own hearts and judging our own hearts and our own spiritual practices and leave all the hygiene business up to those who are trying to do their best. Jesus had some advice for us when we're sitting back and looking at our spiritual hearts. He said, first clean the inside of your cup so that the outside may also become clean. Now, here's another new word to me, dooms scrolling. This is the action of compulsively scrolling through social media and news feeds that relate to bad news. But I, I will tell you this, while I am not a doom scroller by any means, I have had more people come to me this year and ask the question, Pastor Debbie, do you think the end of the world is coming? Admit it. Haven't you even been tempted just a little bit to look back at some of these ancient prophecies that talk about the end of the world? Let me give you permission not to worry about any of that, because Jesus tells us very clearly in Matthew 24 about that day, an hour no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. So even Jesus doesn't know when that time will come. So why should we fret about it? Jesus is coming again. That we can put our money on. He will return. But as far as when he will return, let's just trust that God has that covered. And I trust that his timing is perfect. Now, let me end with a note about prophecy and its relationship to guessing what will happen in this new pandemic year that we are in, which by the way, we are still in. One of the new 2020 words was twindemic. Twindemic is a good example of how prophecy can prevent instead of predict what is to come. Had we experienced, for example, a normal flu season this year, as people were predicting that we would, we were, they were predicting we would have a twindemic, then the effects of the seasonal flu on top of the COVID-19 virus, people predicted would cause a tidal wave of absolute horrible, horrible, infectious numbers, worse than we have this year. But in 2020, more people than ever got the flu shots, and they were already social distancing, and they were already washing their hands, and they were already wearing masks. So this winter, the coronavirus, while yes, it has been as bad as predicted, in the United States, the flu was not bad. We didn't have a twindemic. I think when we look at prophecy in the Hebrew scriptures, they were directed by God above, not by governments. The Hebrew prophets always provided an escape hatch for people to avoid the doom and gloom that was predicted. There was always a way that we could turn around, change directions, and go back to God. That is what mattered if you wanted all things to be well. In the case of the twindemic, we all changed directions. We heeded the advice to predict that the flu could have been bad, and we changed directions. My friends, in the case of faith, we can always turn back to God. 
We can always go back and get on his spiritual path. And it's his path that matters. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you'll come back next Monday for part two. And this Sunday, join us for Mark chapter four, which we'll be talking about parables. God bless you. Have a great week. Amen.